Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most every LR32 here and destroy that succulent, sweet, precious, boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button. I don't know how succulent that would be, but to each their own as we climb even higher the 1200 ladder. Welcome back to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! In Depth. Your boy has done a couple now at this point. We did one on Sky Striker purely. Now we're doing one on Rescue Ace post Age of Overlord with the Diabell Star stuff. And I wanted to do one on Rescue Ace because there are some interesting lines in this deck that, depending on tech cards and things, obviously can change how the deck functions. Um, but this is, or I think at least was, now that there's a new balance in the OCG that went to effect in October, uh, this was one of the best decks of the format. Um, I don't know if that's really going to translate to the TCG in that regard, but regardless, I still want to do an in-depth on how to play the deck in case people are learning it and having trouble with it. I know that there's been some other in-depth videos uh, on YouTube talking about this deck, um, but this is going to be post-Age of Overlord that I haven't really seen anyone talking about. So without any further ado, sit back, relax. If you need to pause this video and come back to it, watch it later. Maybe you need to go take a dump, do your taxes, go to work, whatever. Save this video to your favorites. I also recommend saving it to your watch later playlist. It should save the spot where you stop watching and then you can just continue on later. Also, you can subscribe, but I understand that not everybody wants to do that. And you know what? That's okay. There's a lot of people that I watch and I don't actually subscribe to them. So I really do appreciate all the support. Hope you're having a fantastic day. So really quick, I want to start off by talking about um, this package and we should also be talking about the monster. I want to talk about this because this engine is actually really busted in this deck. So it's going to vary from deck to deck on how people build it, right? Um, most decks are going to play three of the Hunter Fiend, uh, one of the Dia Bellstar Dark Witch, possibly two, and then one copy of the Simple Spoils. I think it's called the ori yeah, original Simple Spoils Snake Eye. Also, you're going to have to please bear with me with my black and white proxies because obviously these cards aren't out yet, and I don't feel like paying 60 American dollars for ink every time I want to make proxies. So bear with me on that. Your boy is cheap AF. So... The let's let's start off with these in order. So the Hunter Fiend allows you to grab Dark Witch, any Diabell Star monster, in case you get more in the future, from your deck or grave to your hand, and then when it's in your grave, you can banish it to target a simple spoil spell or trap that's banished or in your grave and add it uh, to your deck. And then you draw a card. So you add, say, the original Simple Spoils back to the bottom of the deck and then draw. Dark Witch gets you any Simple Spoils spell or trap and sets it to your field. Hunter Fiend is a Simple Spoils spell card. So do keep that in mind. This plays around draw because it doesn't add to your hand. It sets it to the field. So let's quickly talk about the one card combo that you maybe have seen with um, Dark Witch. And then we'll go from there. So... Typically how the line plays out is that you're going to activate the Hunter Fiend to add Dark Witch from deck or grave to hand. So you're going to add this to your hand. The Hunter Fiend is going to go to the graveyard. Now Dark Witch says you can send any other card from your hand or field to the grave to summon this. So, you know, let's just pretend that you've got another card in your hand. Well, that's a bad example because that's the simple spoils card. Let's say you've got another card in your hand. You pitch it to the graveyard to summon out the Dark Witch. You then activate Dark Witch's effect to take a simple spoils spell or trap from your deck and set it to your field. So in this case, we are going to set the original Simple Spoils Snake Eye to our field. Uh, again, playing around Droll. Dark Witch also has the effect that uh, if it's sent from uh, the hand or field to the grave during the opponent's turn, then you can special summon it back out. And then, of course, since it was summoned, you then get the effect to set a Simple Spoils Spell or Trap. There's also a um, Simple Spoils Trap that just got revealed. I don't remember what they named it here in the TCG, but it's essentially like a Infernity Barrier, but it's not a counter trap. And you send uh, a Dia Bell Star monster from your hand or field to the grave, and then target a card on the opponent's field and negate its effects permanently. Um, and that's whenever they activate a card or effect. So you can essentially imperm any card that's on the opponent's field. It's really interesting, and it's another form of interruption that some decks will play. In this particular Rescue Ace build I'm playing, I'm not playing that, but there is the option to play that if you want to. So continuing on with this combo, we're going to activate the original Simple Spoil Snake Eyes. You send one other card from your hand or field to the grave. So in this case, we're going to send the Dark Witch. This allows us to special summon a level 1 Fire Monster from our deck. I'm bringing this out from the grave because I dumped this off when we did the Dark Witch line. So let's just pretend that we sent a card from our hand. Let's just do that one instead. So we're going to summon a level 1 fire from the deck. 
So we're going to get out Hydrant, and that's why this engine is really good in this deck, because this spell gets you to your Hydrant and acts like another one for one. You know, one of the issues that rescue, uh, I almost said rescue Hydrant, I'm sorry, I'm really tired, I just got off of work a little bit earlier today. Um, the one of the main issues with rescue is that they've had is getting to hydrant. It's been very bricky. This essentially acts like another one for one, and it acts for a one for one for any level one fire monster in the game that you're able to play in your deck. Um, it also has the effect that you can banish it from your grave um, in order to uh, add a level one fire monster from deck to hand. Um, and then shuffle your deck and then I think you put like the dark you put the dark witch back into your deck um, It's a little mini engine that like I said it can recur itself in that regard So like the hunter fiend is never a brick because like I said you get the dark witch from deck or grave to hand But the main thing that you care about is using the original simple spoils to go for hydrant So this is that's essentially what the whole one card combo is is that it gets you to hydrant because now from here Depending on what else you have in your hand Hydrant can get you like say airlifter you summon airlifter to get emergency Emergency gets you to turbulence tribute airlifter set for back row You proceed to whip out your diddly and play with yourself all of that just off of a dark witch now when you add up the summons well, Let me let me see here. So this was one. This is two airlifter in theory is three turbulence is four So you still don't walk into a nabiru the problem is is that your end board is a hydrant and a turbulence and four back row if you're satisfied with that, then yeah, you don't walk into a Nibiru because some people may choose to like do like a Hydrant and a Turbulence to like go for IP Mascarena because then like if you've got Rescue set, then you can like Reborn a Rescue Ace or whichever one Reborns a Rescue Ace. You can do that and then you can make the SP Little Knight. It's just at that point you're walking into a Nib, so I feel like at that point you're kind of forced to just leave up the Hydrant and the Turbulence. Um, before committing to that fifth summon at least that's how I would play it because with my luck the opponents always get out the fucking nib I could be like Nibiru could be one and my opponent will always have the nib for me like I have terrible luck in this game I'm just being honest. So anyway with all that out of the way Let's start shuffling up this deck and let us do some test hands I was in the middle of shuffling and then I remember that there were some points that I wanted to talk about while I did this um a lot of people are saying that this is going to be very good, and I do agree that it is pretty solid when it works, but with Nibiru being seen a lot more, at least at the time of me making this video, uh, before Age of Overlord is actually out, I really don't know if this deck's going to take off like it did in the OCG. Um, and like Pendulum is just Pendulum. Like Pendulum has a lot of cool two card combos. Like I was talking with a buddy of mine, he's been playing Chimera branded religiously, and uh, I told him I was going to be talking about it in this video. And I really feel like that stuff like Chimera Branded is still going to be really good. Um, especially too, since like really any deck can play a Dia Bellstar package if it wants to. Um, you just throw it in as like a secondary engine if you have enough room for non-engine. Um, but I just, I don't know. I feel like, even like the Horus stuff too. Like I've been throwing my head against a wall trying to make the Horus stuff work before Valiant Smashers. Because I have regionals that happen before Valiant Smashers. And really, the deck doesn't even attempt to get good until once we get Valiant Smashers. I think that's like November 17th. Um, so the horror stuff will be a good pickup out of Age of Overlord. But I feel like it's going to be like, you know, Darkwing Blast, or as I called it, Darkwing Boo Boo Stain, where the, it, this set just gets better with age. So uh, take that for what you will. So anyway, obviously this deck wants to go first. So um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to have the cards facing me or else I'm never going to be able to get through this video. Um, so we open up Airlifter, uh, Preventer, Impulse, Hunter Fiend, and Rescue Ace HQ. This hand is actually fucking bananas. Like, why can't I ever draw this well like when I'm actually playing? Uh, like, real talk. Like, you saw me shuffle. So, anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to make sure that you can see that on screen. We're going to go ahead and activate the Rescue Ace HQ. I don't know how to feel about HQ post Diabell Star. Like, I played as a one of. But I, I really don't know how I feel about it. Seeing Hunter Fiend, like, in your opening hand anytime, just, oh, take me to church, daddy. Like, it's so good. So we're going to activate the Hunter Fiend. We're going to search for the Diabell Star Dark Witch, a.k.a. Waifu Witch, because, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh players love their waifus. Um, again, remember that you can send this from your hand, uh, send another card from your hand or field to the grave to drop this out. So if I wanted to, I could dump off the HQ that's on the field. Um, with me having an Impulse, Airlifter, and Preventer, Impulse is a good card, but, like, if I'm playing multiple Preventer, which I think I am in this deck, then, like, the Preventer doesn't really matter. I think I dropped it down to, like, a one-of. Um, but we're just gonna say that, like, we're gonna ditch the Preventer. 
um, to summon out the Dark Witch. Um, I believe Dark Witch activates when you attempt to summon it. I could be wrong on that, but regardless, we're going to activate Dark Witch's effect to set the Sinful Spoils. We could set another Hunter Fiend if we want to, for whatever reason, um, but we're going to set the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye, if I could find it here. Uh, remember that this is our hand. So we're going to set uh, the Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. And I've got Impulse and Airlifter, so we're going to go ahead and activate this, sending off the Dark Witch in order to go for our Fire, Fire, Fire Hydrant. Hopefully there is not a pooch nearby that will piss on us. <laughs> um, and now with this up, um, we could we could activate Hydrant here. Um, luckily we still have our normal summon, so I want to keep this as insulated from Imperm as much as possible, because honestly, like... Hydrant is like the biggest piece of Valor or Imperm bait in the game, at least in this deck. So if I can force my opponent to like use an Ash on it, that's even better. Um, and what's nice too is that since we opened up Airlifter, I can summon Airlifter since I haven't used the normal summon or just use the additional normal off the HQ. Um, even though I literally just said it never comes up, it's actually coming up. Uh, you can summon Airlifter, activate the effect, and if the opponent Ashes this or something, now that they can't target this, it's like, okay, cool, now you're guaranteed to search off the Hydra because now they can't Ash you again. So we're going to go ahead and activate the Airlifter's effect, try and bait out the Ash. And we're going to go for the Emergency. And that will give us a summon. Um, we'll go ahead and activate Hydra's effect to search for another monster. Uh, we could search another Preventer here. Um, and if I don't, I, I kind of want to keep the Impulse in my hand. Because uh, we're playing Double Turbulence. Do I have another Preventer in this deck? Uh, no, I dropped that to a 1 of. <laughs> so, if you're playing more than one Preventer, um, I cut it down to 1 for testing reasons. Because uh, the Bell Star package, I didn't want to play a 43 card deck. Um, but if you're playing another Preventer, obviously you could grab Preventer here and have more lines. Um, so do keep that in mind. Actually, in fact, for argument's sake here, we're just going to say that I pitched the impulse instead, now that I know. Um, and we'll just say that uh, Preventer's in our hand, and then we'll just use the Hydrant to search as an impulse instead. That way we're not actually losing any sort of card advantage. So we'll just say that we hit the we pitched the impulse off of the Dark Witch instead, um, so that I don't look like I'm a scrub. <laughs> um, so now we've got impulse. Um, we've only got one... Uh, rescue base and grave so our HQ doesn't really do anything right now which honestly the target for hardly ever comes up um, so now at this point I also want to talk about this interaction as well at this point we could activate emergency we do have one more normal summon keep in mind um, keep in mind that what's great about emergency being a quick play let's say that the opponent like for whatever reason we didn't have airlifter on the board and like they tried to imperm this then since we already have this if the opponent like tries to imperm the hydrant for whatever reason, we don't have another you know rest case up. You can chain the emergency from your hand, bring out turbulence, and then you tribute the hydrant. And now that it's no longer on the field, the imperm is gonna fizzle, and then you now have the turbulence established, and you still get a search off of the hydrant. And this can apply to like you know if if we opened up emergency, like before we did all the Dia Bell Star stuff. If I just opened up emergency and I go summon airlifter, attempt to activate the effect, and they want to imperm me, I can just go emergency, bring out like a turbulence, and tribute this. And then that's one less hand trap you have to worry about going off on your turbulence. So we're going to go ahead and activate emergency. And that's really one of the big keys with this deck. Pre and post Age of Overlord is you want to try and bait out as many things that the opponent may have before hitting your Hydrant's effect to search and then hitting your turbulence set forward. This deck lives and dies by its turbulence set. Um, pre and post Age of Overlord, quite honestly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and tribute the airlifter off the emergency resolution. Um, and then we're going to activate the turbulence. And then I usually just go for the ones that I don't already have access to. Emergencies in the grave. So we already use that. So, and I'm not playing reinforce in this build. That may change post Age of Overlord uh, if I still decide to play with this deck. But we're going to talk about that near the end of the video because I feel some type of way about this deck. Um, so we're going to set the rescue alert, extinguish, and contain. Uh, we're going to shuffle these up. Don't let your opponent cheat you and be like, oh, you have to set them in the order you show them. No, you get to shuffle up these fucking cards before you set them. Please don't let your opponent cheat you. I've had people try to cheat me and be like, oh, you have to show me what cards and where they are. No, I do not. Please stop trying to cheat me like I'm a scrub. <laughs> like, real talk. Um, you can set these in whatever order you want. Um, and do remember that with the new policy documents update, uh, the opponent 
can ask you on the turn what the cards are. Obviously, you don't show them. And then once they draw for turn, then it's no longer public knowledge. Um, so, but regardless, you end on all of this set in the back row. And remember, with Hydrant, you can activate one of these um, the turn it was set. So, like, if we wanted to use Alert to get a search or Rescue to summon, maybe the opponent's got something in the grave. Maybe you want to bring back the Preventer that we actually ditched earlier. <laughs> So, or bring back Impulse to have a uh, Tribute if they activate a monster effect. You can have a Tribute to tag out for another Rescue Ace. Um, so we're going to go and activate Preventer, though, um, in order to banish the... I guess it really doesn't matter. We'll just banish the Emergency to summon the uh, Preventer. Um, and now I feel like I can kind of more talk about issues that I have with this deck. So in that whole combo, the Diabell Star was one summon... This was two, uh, Airlifter was three, the Preventer was four, and the Turbulence was five. If the opponent nibs us, we cry. Because even though we don't care too much about losing these monsters, per se, I would rather be putting them into something like a Mascarena line. Um, even though we have the four back row established, that's not always enough to really get you there. And yes, we do have an Impulse in hand, but, you know, even post Age of Overlord, Something that I really despise about this deck is that it just walks into a wall of Nibiru. And I don't feel like that's really seeing as much play in the OCG. And so because of that, I feel like unless you just don't fear the nib, then like you, you just pop off and make this board, or you just don't summon the preventer at all, and you end on four summons. Um, and I mean, either way, like yeah, if they nib you, you can go, okay, cool, HQ and put stuff back. But I don't feel like that the back row on its own, at least in testing for me, is ever enough to really get you there. Um, these cards are good, but they're better when you have Hydrant. Um, it, this would be a better board even against a Nib if you had like a Hand Trap. So this deck is good, don't get me wrong. There's a reason why it came in second place at YCS Cancun. I just don't know if it's really going to be a tier 1 threat that I've seen some people talking about post Age of Overlord with the Dia Bellstar stuff. But the fact that you can create a board like this is absolutely insane, especially if everybody in the room isn't ready for Rescue Ace with what they can do with the Dia Bellstar stuff. They're going to be pooping their pants all over the venue floor when you drop out a board like this and they don't have the nib, whether it's because they're not playing it or because they didn't open it. So that was uh, combo number one. Let's dive on into combo number two. The Dia Bellstar stuff helps this deck be so much more consistent. Like, oh, it's, it's really nice when you're not bricking. Okay. Alright, so we've got Hydrant and Triple Emer uh, Double Emergency. That's actually not terrible. Ash, okay. Diabell Star, okay. That is, that's hot. Um, okay, cool. Well, how do we want to play this here, George? Um, the Emergencies are great bait for Diabell Star. I really hate that you have to tribute a Rescue Ace. I wish it was tribute a monster. Um, so we'll go ahead and activate the Diabell Star. And to just immediately get our engine going. Um, again, like, great act. Well, they can't even ash this because it sets it to the field. <laughs> so we'll activate. We already have it established, so we'll just go for the original simple spoils. Um, if I could find it here. Cannot tell you how hard it is to find cards in a deck when you're searching when everything is black and white and you don't know what's what. Um, so even though we have Hydrant in hand, this only gets us a level 1 fire, so I don't mind just setting it and then activating it. If they want to ash me here to stop my summon from the deck, cool. Like, I'm just going to normal summon a Hydrant and move on with my day. And then if they want to imper me, cool. I have another emergency in my hand. Like, get on my level. <laughs> we're just we're just too good. Now, of course, with me showing off the combos in this video, I'm never going to draw this well if I take this to a regional. Like, seriously. Or I'm going to go against Chimera Branded and I'm going to get my, my crap punched in. Um, so we've established the Hydrant. Uh, we're going to activate Hydrant. Um, and just for funsies, we're going to say that the opponent is going to attempt to imperm because it's our only thing on the board. We're going to chain emergency. And we're going to have a shit-eating grin. We're going to say, hey, you want to finish that pizza? Um, I could go for airlifter to search another spell, but I really don't need it. I just need the turbulence. Because especially if... Um, even if like they ashed me on the simple spoils, like, okay, normal summon the Hydrant out of my hand... 
then if you imperm me cool, you've lost two hand traps. I'm basically all but guaranteed with the turbulence, unless you're just that much better of a player than me, and I just can't draw as well as you, and you get three hand traps. Like, <laughs> So we tributed. So now that imperm is going to fizzle. So now the hydrant's still going to get us a search because it's going to resolve off the board. Yeah. Let's see. Um, we still have our normal summon. Airlifter could get us to the HQ. But it's kind of like, what do we do? Yo, we could go. Actually, yeah. Um, you could go for Preventer here. I feel like that this kind of comes down to whatever sort of matchup you have. Because we're, we are sitting on double emergency and grave with a hydrant. So that's three cards. Uh, Airlifter could get us to the HQ. Um, and then you could do like a link line. Um to get you to like a mass green which can turn into a little knight little knight's gonna be busted i should add um so yeah let's go ahead and normal summon that um because we still have our normal summon we'll go and activate the airlifter just for combo sake i'm gonna say that we go for hq but like this can vary like um you could have added preventer banish the hydrant that we have in grave uh to summon the preventer to have more interruption uh because like having a book of moon on a big body is really good um so do do keep that in mind plus we've got ash so we'll go and add the um hq we'll activate it we'll go and activate the turbulence we've already got two emergencies in grave so we're going to go for everything else uh extinguish rescue uh alert contain um and if you didn't have access to emergency and like if you had contain or like if you had one of the others then that's when you would go for emergency if that makes sense like if we already had what the hell is this if we already had rescue in hand well since it's a one-up we're just going to go for the emergency so you just go for whichever ones you don't already have so these are all set on the board i'm going to flip these up so that you can see what we're working with this is our hand this is the uh, hydrant and the ash and then we've got our four back row here so now at this point we've committed to the hydrant and diabell star that is two summons. We're on three summons, four summons. So again, like as much as I want to commit to a Mascarena with four back row, if the opponent nibs me, then the Mascarena is kind of a mute point. Um, but we also have the HQ for follow-up. Plus, I don't really feel like, in this case, luckily, I don't feel like the opponent would actually just nib a Mascarena. Even if they know what our back row is, I don't feel like that that's really a line that they would take. Now, that's sort of like 4D chess. Um, because, hell, for all I know, this video blows up like the purely one did, and then everybody's like, okay, well, now I know how to beat this deck. I'm going to go ahead and nib on the Masquerina, and it's like, all right, you got me. <laughs> but um, you do have the ability now to go for the Masquerina. Um, since the Hydrant was no longer on the board, then you can't activate these. Um, but, I mean, they're quick plays anyway, besides the traps, obviously. It's like you can just activate them. You could bring out, say, Airlifter. Airlifter gets you to Emergency, and now that you've got another monster up, then you can make SP Little Knight. Um, and SP Little Knight gets you a free Banish. I'm sure I've got it here. Yeah. So, you know, the opponent tries to make some sort of play. Then it's like, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to activate Rescue because I'm pretty sure that this is the Monster Reborn one. Oh, and then obviously before we end our turn, we've got one, two, three, four with the with the double emergency. We have five. So you could put all these except Hydrant back um, and then draw a card. So we would actually have, assuming that we put those back, we would have a three-card hand and we're passing turn on four back row and a Mascarena. And you may think, oh, well, Avery, this is a basic board. You know, you got the HQ, whatever. But you got to keep in mind, you can activate Rescue, go for the Hydrant. That turns on the secondary effects of your other back row whenever the Hydrant's up. And then you also have the Mascarena, which you can link off with if the opponent tries to do some shenanigans. To go for the Little Knight, Little Knight's going to activate and banish their monster. And that's a permanent banish. It doesn't target. Um, at least I don't think that it does. No, unless I just can't read. This this doesn't target, but if it does, then it does. My printouts are terrible. But point is, is that you have a banish interruption, and you're still working with, at minimum, three back row, uh, one of which can add you back a rescue ace monster, and then the other two, one can pop, and then one can make their monster unable to be used for a summon. Um, and then you also have the ash. So you see what I mean where this is good when it works. <laughs> but, like... If the opponent, you know, if they nib you on the Masquerina, then you lose that. Now, again, luckily, you still have the Hydrant for follow-up. You would have the extra draw because we have the HQ. You do have these other lines. The opponent hits you with a Feather Duster. Well, then you're kind of just sitting here pooping your pants. 
Um, but when they don't have that stuff, I mean, it's it's really good. That's where I feel like this deck's gonna be more of like a meta call. Um, Cause keep in mind too, we're getting things like Doomsday Star or Dark Crisis, whatever they change the name of that exceeds to. Uh, you know, like, could you imagine you just brick and you go, okay, summon Hydrant, get a search and then just put a Doomsday Star over this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's hilarious so especially whenever this the back row you can still interact with your opponent even though dark uh doomsday star locks you out of summoning so overall what are my thoughts on this deck now that we've sort of talked about it and gone in depth and the choke points and all that you know if you want to beat this deck uh, feather duster will shut this down even if they're playing the reinforce uh trap all that does is protect one of their monsters like you know it it's, it's really, it's a back row mid-range control deck. You know, if if you have issues against Labyrinth, I, I would say that maybe you'll have some issues against Rescue Ace. But I mean, if you can beat back row decks easily, I think you're gonna be just fine. This Dia Bellstar stuff is cool, especially when you go to the next turn. Uh, and if the Rescue Ace player has a board established, because they can go Hunter Fiend, Banish, um, put back the Dark Witch, draw a card, um, or put back the uh, Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes draw a card. Snake Eyes could banish itself even before you do that to put the Dark Witch back on the bottom to search you a Hydrant. Um, so you do have those other plays available to you. But again, I don't know how prevalent those things are going to be when it seems like all of the other meta decks in the room just seem so much better. Like, yeah, Horus isn't that great, but then once we get Valiant Smashers November 17th, just a few weeks after Age of Overlord, the Centurion stuff's going to make that deck insane. And for all we know, maybe the TGs will pop off here in the TCG. I don't think that they will, but there's the possibility that they can. So overall, it's it's solid. I'll give it that. Uh, it doesn't feel that hard to beat. If you out the back row, you win the ball game. Um, even if, like, again, if they try and do, like, these mask arena lines, if they try to get fancy, they just run their ass into a nib and then you're just sitting there asking them if they're going to finish that pizza. Like, it's just a clap. It's a GG. So, overall, it is a fun deck to play. I don't think it's for me. It's not my cup of tea, I don't think. I just, I keep, I, maybe it's just me, and I'm just so afraid of running into Nib, but I've been hit with it so many times that I'm I'm so paranoid of it. I've had the fear of God of the Nibiru thrown into me. So, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if there's any sort of combos I missed. I know that there's some other, like, in-depth two-card combos and things, but I wanted to do test hands because this this deck is very non-linear um, and does require good technical play to be even better at it than I am. Um, not saying I'm perfect at it or anything, um, but I at least wanted to put a tutorial out there that hopefully you all can enjoy. So, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.